Hey everyone and welcome back to Copilot. We're going to jump right into it here. In our uh, last <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. In our last video we uh, we took a look at the um, the results of my graphics um, using the new DLSS 3.7 and a bunch of the tweaks uh, that we did to that. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description uh, below and you can uh, go check that out. And uh, you can see the graphics quality we're getting uh, with the new DLSS 3.7. All right, we're going to jump right into it here and uh, save some time. As you can see, I have the aircraft already set up and uh, and ready to go, uh, so you didn't have to sit through that. Um, just to bring you up to speed, if you see a little bit of uh, jittering in the uh, in the um, video as I'm panning around and stuff, know that that's just in the uh, video. It's pretty silky smooth in the sim. I have no problems. Um, I got a lot of things running right now and uh, it's uh, pushing the sim to the, its limits. So we're gonna see uh, what kind of performance we get out of this thing. Last time we saw what the quality was. Uh, this time we're gonna see uh, how it performs in a, in a real flight. Okay, so let's get right to it. Um, just to let you know uh, all the stuff I got running, I'm recording in 4K here. Um, I'm not upscaling or downscaling anything, it's all native uh, resolution. So it's just uh, pure 4, 4K. Um, I also have auto FPS um, running that just sits off on my uh, other screen. So we got the recording going, we got the auto FPS running. I'm also using FS Realistic, uh, so that's running in the background. And I also have uh, MSI Afterburner running, so I can show you uh, um, the frame rates and stuff we're, we're getting. Um, so yeah, let's get this show on, on the road here. First, let me uh, take you on the outside, give you a look around so you can see the kind of uh, graphics we're getting here. As you can see, the graphics looks absolutely, uh, absolutely beautiful. We're at the same airport that we were at uh, in my last video. We're at uh, Boston Logan here. We're going to be taking off on runway uh, 27, which is uh, up here. But uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, the graphics look fantastic. Just to give you uh, Still got some uh, artifacting going on over here with the tiling and uh, stuff. But uh, we'll get that sorted out. That comes and goes. All right, just to give you a quick, uh, quick look around the airport, and uh, yeah, everything we got uh, going on in the the cockpit here. So yeah, the sim looks um, fantastic. Um, the sim rates that we're getting are are great. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, these tweaks. We also changed the presets in the uh, DLSS to uh, to Echo. It's um, a preset that uh, NVIDIA unlocked for us. Seems to be working well. Okay, let's bring some frame rates up here so you can actually. First off, let's um, let me. Uh, Bring up Navigraph charts here for a second here. All right. <clears throat> See how we're going to get to our runway here. We got to get over here to uh, to runway uh, two seven. So we'll taxi along Kilo here to Mike. 
We'll taxi up Mike here to Charlie. We'll cut across Charlie here to Delta. And we'll take Delta straight up and uh, depart runway 27. All right, so now we know how we're going to get there. We can uh, minimize that and get this show on the road. Uh, first, also, let me bring up some frame rates for you guys. There you go. Up in the top left-hand corner, you can see the frame rates. You can see uh, my RAM, what my RAM's doing. And we can see uh, my uh, graphics card right now is working at uh, 96%, 95. All right. Let's get going here. some power up this is going to be a flight from Boston Logan to Toronto International um, so this is real time real weather um, the frame rates you're seeing up on the top left there is uh, my generated frame rates so my sim value frame rates are going to be half of a uh, of what they are so I'm in and around 50 frames per second right now turn on the Toby there I like to use the Toby eye tracker when I'm uh, taxiing I'm gonna cross over the runway here I don't have traffic on. That would really tax my system right now, um, since I, because I'm recording. If I wasn't recording and I had traffic on, I would be ha getting around the same frame rates that I am now. So if I was to turn traffic on, I'd probably lose uh, 10 FPS. That's why I'm kind of. Uh, Anxious for uh, Beyond ATC to uh, to release with their traffic injection. I think they're going to release the ATC portion first, and the traffic injection is going to come along behind it. But uh, we'll have to see about that. This taxiway is so big they had to put the word taxi across it. <laughs> Of aircraft landing on it. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, going to hang it right up here. You can see our windsock off to our right here. Winds aren't too bad today. Not too many clouds in the sky here. clouds are a really heavy hitter when it comes to frame rates. My frame rates would probably be lower if there was heavy overcast or something. An outside look here. See what some of the graphics look like. I got that Toby eye tracker on. Just panning around for you a little bit. Alright. Our speed in check here. Where am I going? Uh, okay. Up here at the fork in the road. We're going to stay to the left here. We're departing on runway 27 via the Highland 7 departure.
But yeah, you can see like off in the distance, everything is nice and clean. The lines are all sharp. I can see all the antennas over there on that island. Um, yeah, the sim look great. It's performing great. I can definitely get much higher uh, frame rates if I wanted to, but for me, it's all about trying to balance the performance with the uh, with the quality. So long as my generated frame rates are over uh, 80 FPS, I'm happy. Um, my sim runs silky, silky smooth. Um, water looks great. Runs silky smooth. Uh, you know, anything above 40 FPS and it's just butter. Um, just beautiful. Have a look around so you can see the water there. Looks pretty good. Actually, they're not antennas, they're windmills over there on the island. But uh, yeah, you can see them. The aliasing, anti-aliasing is uh, great. There's no shimmering. There's no, uh, except for those tiles we saw back there. Uh, everything here seems to be good. Yeah, the sim is just beautiful. I'm happy. If you haven't uh, been to uh, Island Sim Pilot's uh, um, site, I would highly, highly recommend you go check out his channel. Um, when it comes to performance and graphics, he puts a lot of work into, uh, into researching this stuff. and. Uh, yeah, it's his tips and tricks that uh, got my sim to where it is now, looking uh, looking good. Okay, let me get some, uh, before takeoff checks out of the way here, auto throttle on, we'll turn VNAV on, LNAV on, master caution, recall checked and clear, checked and clear, transponder is set Literally lost my place landing lights on come on now there we go and our strobes are on we are good to go we're going to be doing a v-nav takeoff here departure all right let's get this show on the road bring our power up to 40 percent make sure the engines are stable and in sync we're gonna go right out we're gonna do a rolling takeoff here Toga. Watching those frame rates as we fly over the city.
Oops, wrong button. Okay. Frame rate's still in the 90s. That's good. Oh, get behind my flaps here. Get behind the aircraft. Flaps up. speed to 250 knots. As you can see, so far the performance is great, the graphics are great, the auto FPS is doing its thing. Increase our altitude. Clear 20,000. As you can see, the graphics are absolutely fantastic. Boston in the background there. Frame rates are up in the 90s. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. At 10,000 feet, I'll engage my econ. And the aircraft will go up to its uh, cost index value. But uh, we got to maintain 250 knots below 10,000. Coming up on 10,000, we can engage our econ, execute, our speed bug jumped up to our cost index value, our speed will climb now. Should be on our departure here. Come on. I hate it when it does that. There we go. Navigraph charts. Ah, come on. Hate it when it does that. There we go. You can see us on our uh, departure there. I love Navigraph charts. I just ended my uh, one year subscription with Navigraph charts and, uh, and uh, renewed it for another year. Absolutely love it. It just brings your whole sim into sync, all your nav data, got your charts for everything. Um, just great. We can shut our landing lights off. Uh, those should have been on continuous. You see, I wasn't uh, paying attention when I was doing my before takeoff checks. Too busy uh, checking out the performance here. Let's go outside, take a look around. Still learning to get proficient with this uh, with the joystick. But just give you a look around at some of the graphics. I'm sure, what airport that is down there. But the sim looks just great, man. Performing fantastic.
is beautiful. Coming on 18,000 feet. Our transition altitude. Switch our altimeter over. Standard. We're good. And right on our departure. As planned. Well, so far so good and our frame rates are still up there in the uh, in the 90s whoops increase my altitude here I might have missed it no well, looks like I got it in time and we're gonna climb right up to uh, 30,000 feet but uh, yeah just to give you a look at the performance and uh, and we got all these things uh, running in the background and we're recording in 4K <laughs> and uh, still able to get uh, decent performance so well, my frame rates dropped down there into the 70s. I don't like that. But you now that gets me concerned when I see that in the 60s. Just the switching the views over. But yeah, no, uh, the frame rates are, are good. If I can, I try to balance it to try to keep my frame rates above 80. Um, as long as I keep them above 80, this thing is flying uh, buttery smooth. Okay. Well, I'm not going to bore you guys with the uh, cruise over to Toronto. So with the magic of editing, in about two seconds, I'll see you in. Uh, I'll see you on the uh, descent over in Toronto there. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, quick second later, and uh, we're approaching our uh, top of descent. Uh, just back over here. Yeah, our frame rates have uh, remained around the low 90s, high 80s there the whole way. Um, but as you can see, the weather has changed somewhat since we departed Boston. When it was nice and clear when we departed Boston and uh, it's pretty overcast and cloudy here as we uh, approach our uh, top of descent for Toronto. Give you a look on the outside what we got going on here. looking pretty good those frame rates are uh, pretty dismal there hmm. not sure why that's down to in the 60s like that but uh, everything's still passing by nice and smooth yeah not sure what's going on with those frame rates Yeah, see how the uh, clouds really impact your uh, FPS? Um, just checking the auto FPS. My clouds are on ultra, so it lowers my uh, terrain level of detail, which doesn't really matter because I can't see the terrain. But uh, I think it's showing us these low frame rates because we're like right in the clouds. But uh, as you can see, even those those uh, frame rates looked uh, wonky there. Everything's still smooth. The sim's still running uh, buttery smooth. Uh, the clouds are all going by smooth. There's no stuttering. There's none of that weird shading anomalies in the uh, clouds. 
where you can see the texture layers. It's kind of weird. We'll see when we start descending through them how that looks. Got the aircraft set up for the descent. There's no ATC, so we're going to bring her right down to our 3,000 feet. Going to do an auto land on this uh, on this landing, so I can have a good look at the terrain as it's going by and stuff, and uh, see what we get. Yeah, that's weird. Usually when I come to the outside views, the uh, frame rates are usually higher than the cockpit views. But uh, not this time. But what I'm really looking for is stability and balance. Um, that's, that's the key to it. If you can find that balance, then, uh, you know, the frame rates are, are, they're important, but the sim can fly nice at, at lower frame rates too. Aircraft's powering down. We're gonna start our descent. What we really want to keep an eye on is the approach as we're approaching the terrain. Keep an eye on the terrain, see if we got stuttering with the buildings as they're going by or clouds or There's our, uh, our arrival chart right there. We'll be uh, entering via the Woozy transition. Let's go over and uh, take a look at the, uh, the weather in Toronto here. So the winds aren't too bad, 150 at seven knots. We got 15 statute miles. Uh, Visibility, we got a uh, few clouds at 3,000 feet, few clouds at 5,000 feet, scattered at 15,000 feet. Temperature 10, dew point 6, altimeter 2965. So the weather's not too bad in Toronto, some clouds. And we've started our descent. As you can see on the display, I've put a fix around my transition. That's the woozy transition. That's the transition from my arrival. Just gives me better situational awareness doing that. I also put a fix around uh, um, my destination, CYYZ. And I put three rings around CYYZ. A uh, 10 mile ring, or a 5 mile ring, 10 mile ring, and a 15 mile ring. And it just gives me a visual reference of uh, where I am on, as I approach. So it's a good little trick. If you don't do that, I would advise you do that. Just uh, gives you better situational awareness. I notice in the video there's some weird aliasing going on on the uh, 
the tablet on the other side of the cockpit there on the bottom that little white strip there but uh, it's not happening in the sim <laughs> so I don't see that shimmering in the sim when I rotate uh, my view frame rates are holding pretty steady it's where I want to see them in the 80s that means my sim value rates are uh, above 40 when they drop below 40 that's when I start keeping an eye on it I'm usually really good up until about 35 frames. If I start dropping below 35 frames per second, then that's when uh, you're going to start seeing issues with stuttering and stuff like that. But yeah, the clouds look great. The terrain looks great. Right now, uh, my uh, TLOD is at 275, which is fine because you can't even really see the terrain for the cloud cover. So it uh, it works out and just keeps the sim balanced. I love it. If you don't use uh, MSFS Auto FPS, um, I would highly recommend. Uh, giving that a try goes a long way for helping balance everything out in your sim and funny enough I learned about auto FPS from uh, auto sim pilot also that has evolved a little bit <laughs> it was dynamic FPS uh, before and uh, They've improved it, uh, and it's working pretty good. Best part is it's free, so I don't know why you wouldn't use it if it's free. All right, we're crossing over the Woozy transition, entering the Ling 3 arrival for runway 15 left. It's funny how I got to sync all my views up. Got to sync my reset view up with my uh, the FS realistic uh, view and then have all that in sync with the Toby high tracker <laughs> drives me nuts sometimes but uh, yeah when it comes to the Toby eye tracker I really like it um, you know in the airliners when I'm cruising along I don't uh, use it all that much but uh, but uh, I use it a lot um, for general aviation. When I'm flying GA aircraft, uh, yeah, I absolutely love the Toby Eye Tracker for that. And it's not bad. You set the sensitivities on it, even in the airliner, uh, um, and you know, just for your scanning and stuff, it's uh, it's pretty good. Saves you having to keep playing with the mouse or your hat switch or stuff like that. Okay, coming up on our transition altitude. Entering the cloud layer. G 
GPU and CPU temps are pretty good. Around 60 C. I'm only using, well, it bounces up 30s and 40s every once in a while, but using only about 20% of my uh, CPU. 82% of the GPU. And I still have a lot of VRAM space left on the uh, on the uh, VRAM on the memory for the GPU, so I'm not bottlenecking there. But we're probably definitely mainframe limited. Let's go check it out. There we go up in the other corner. There's our sim value frame rates right there 39, 40 FPS. Yeah, we're mainframe limited, which is okay. It's in the yellow, it's not quite in the red. It would be nice if I could keep this main thread under uh, 20. But uh, everything else is pretty good. And as you can see for the VRAM, I'm using 9.4 or 5. And uh, available, I got 14.92 gigabytes for the VRAM. So we've got lots of VRAM there. So, yeah, looks pretty good. Get rid of that. Past our transition altitude here, set our altimeter. You can see uh, the fixes I put around the airport coming up. I changed my uh, my altimeter. The aircraft's resetting its descent profile. Heading out over Lake Ontario here. So I'm gonna look outside. Descent here. This arrival takes us to beam the field, so we all uh, will fly a beam the field and come around for runway one five left. See our aircraft on the uh, on the arrival here. And you can see how we'll come across, we'll hang a right, fly up, and then turn back for the field. Basically flying the downwind. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, I've spent decades trying to, uh, you know, to get a decent sim going. 
you know, and uh, for decades it's always that struggle trying to, you could never get it dialed in. And this is the first time I think I've ever been able to get a sim dialed in where everything is just great. Flying smoothly and uh, the graphics are good. What more can you ask for? <laughs> Apparently the new flight simulator, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, is supposed to be able to utilize our, uh, our threads um, better on our CPUs. Which would be a great benefit to me. have a higher end CPU so it would be great if the sim could take advantage of that. I could have went with the 7800X 3D um, but because I'm uh, doing videos and stuff like that it was more in my best interest to go with the 7900X um, 3D. Just gives me that more uh, for when I'm rendering videos and stuff. But I think for a Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think. Um, you can do great with a 7800 uh, X 3D. If you're not going to be doing recording videos and that, yeah, that would be a perfect uh, CPU. All right, concentrate on our flying here. We're below 10,000. Get our landing lights on. Fields directly ahead of us. See right here on the display. But you see how putting those fixed rings in uh, um, really helps. It gives me that scope all the way around the airport. It's a great situational awareness tool. Uh, I do that on all my flights. gives you a good visual reference for flaps and stuff like that. Speaking of which, should go set up my reference. I think we'll use 30 degrees flaps today. At 140 knots. Gives me my, uh, my reference. See the graphics look great. The terrain looks looks fantastic. You can see the west end of Toronto down there. And we got the Toronto downtown core off in the distance there.
everything's still smooth. Even though my frame rates are down in the 30s. But it just goes to show you, you don't need to be banging out, uh, you know, 100 FPS to get a good, smooth running um, sim. You just got to get everything balanced and, uh, and working together. Now for Toronto, I do have a, a scenery package for the city Toronto itself. Um, so that hits hard on the frame rates also. And my CYYZ is also a Fly Tampa Custom Airport. Boston Logan was a Fly Tampa Custom Airport too. My frame rates would definitely be much higher. If I would probably be getting another 15 frames per second if I wasn't recording. But it just goes to show that uh, even recording in 4K and dragging my frame rates down into the 30s, I still have a um, nice smooth uh, sim. We're beaming the field now. Pearson off on our left. Over here. Maintaining 210 knots as per our arrival instructions. It's kind of the long way in. fly you all the way out here and then uh, fly you all the way back in. <laughs> well, and you get to see the uh, outskirts of Toronto there, the suburbs. weather's not too bad. But what I really want to see is what the approach looks like. Once we're locked on to the ILS and stuff, see what the terrain looks like. And, uh, But, uh, yeah, I've done a lot of real flying, um, GA flying, and uh, I have to say, this looks, uh, when you look out the window here, this looks pretty realistic. My next video, I'm going to be doing a video uh, from a small little airport that that uh, means a lot to me. Um, Buttonville Municipal um, Airport. It's the end of an era for uh, Buttonville. It's uh, closing down. The property's been bought by uh, somebody. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah they're closing down Bidenville it's pretty much deserted right now but uh, yeah the, that airport holds a lot of fond memories uh, for me that's where uh, it all my flying all started to take place I went to flight school there and had all my flight training there and uh, yeah great little airport So in my next video, I'm going to pay homage to, uh, to Buttonville, and we'll go over and uh, check out Buttonville. I was thinking I should grab a Cessna 150 and recreate my, uh, my solo cross-country flight. It's been a long time. Never, uh, never recreated that flight in the sim. So I should grab a Cessna 150 and uh, and uh, go relive that flight. All right, we're about ready to turn for our approach. Where we would be usually getting vectors from ATC, but uh, since we got no ATC, yeah, and as you can see, the train looks fantastic. Great. All the streets, the houses. It's good. 90 FPS. All right. Let's get the aircraft set up here for our approach. Set our minimums. Kind of a combination uh, VNAV ILS approach. Combination RNAV ILS approach. All right, we'll drop one degree of flaps. Slope active. We're 
lined up with the localizer. We'll arm our approach and our second autopilot. looking good. I don't see any stuttering. Let's drop flaps 10. Or flaps 5 I should say. Hazy, still can't see the field.
Well, that wasn't too bad. Set up some brakes here. Let's get our auto brake turned off. And back off. Uh, and we'll turn our strobes off. And now we gotta find our way. our way back over to the FedEx facility but uh, yeah you can see our graphics or our FPS is in the high high 80s low 90s again have a look around Toronto Pearson Airport Hazy day around Toronto here. Whoops. Got a taxi in there. That's why you should be looking where you're going. <laughs> Yeah, the graphics look great. Taxing a little fast here. But since we have the airport to ourselves, Toronto here is Air Canada's main hub. Don't quote me on that. Might be Vancouver. <laughs> Cross over runway 23 and take Juliet over to the FedEx facility. Toronto Pearson International has a huge FedEx facility here. Clear right, clear left. <laughs>
Yeah, nice and smooth. Everything's beautiful. This little complex coming up here on our right is the Sky Charter uh, area. It's where all the GA flights were operate out of uh, Pearson. Got a lot of your small jets and uh, stuff like that that uh, work out of there. Fire hall number two. That complex that you see up ahead of us there, on our uh, right up here, that's the FedEx facility. Forgot to start my APU. that's it set our parking brakes RAP gens ready and we can kill our engines there we go there you have it folks um, that's the performance test to show you how the uh, how the sim performs now with the new uh, DLSS 3.7 and uh, the tweaks we did on the DLSS um, with the um, presets, setting them to echo, um, the camera lens effects that we, uh, we took care of in the uh, Microsoft Flight Sim config files. Um, yeah, we cover all that in my last video. Um, so I'll leave a link in the description below to that uh, last video. Um, go check that out and uh, yeah there you have it so uh, until next time keep the blue side up and stay safe my friends later